Hello everyone, we are back once again as we are every Tuesday, 1.30 Pacific Standard Time for our Facebook Live. My name is Mark Stark and we've got some great content for you today. Um, we are going to talk, we're going to be talking to Edie Costa and I have to tell you, if you want to know everything about staging, well, you came to the right place because we are going to hear it today. Edie, welcome. Thanks for being here today. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm looking forward to this. Awesome. You know, as always, I like uh, for people to really understand you know, your background. Can you take a few minutes and just share a little bit about your background? And, you know, I know it ties in a little bit to the staging, but I'll leave that to you. Go ahead. Okay. Well, many years ago, we had a restaurant business and in the restaurant business is we would buy and sell them. We would change the decor. And I thought, gee, people are really loving this. So I decided that I would take some classes from the JC and actually maybe work at going out and getting a decorator's license and um, I did. I thought, you know, let me see what I do with this and I'll just kind of play around with it a little bit and see where it goes. Well, I loved doing it and it led me to places like going into downtown LA and what they call the Blue Whale and down in Robertson Boulevard and the more that I got into taking like flower designing classes and um, working with some of the vendors that helped me decorate some of the homes or condos or the restaurants that I did, I found it just fascinating that the before and afters just blew me away. So I, um, I started when I would go to some of those vendors thinking, well, I think these are, are just amazing things. And one of them had done all these uh, different arrangements and designs for Disneyland. And another vendor had done like all kinds of comforters and drapes and pillows. And the source is always what's so very, very valuable when you're staging because if you can find good things and especially at reasonable prices, you find it so much more affordable that putting it all together became such a flair that I kind of naturally had. But for people that don't have that skill, there's so many other ways to maybe go about it. So you can use magazines, you can use model homes, um, you can even use some of the uh, magazines that we use in the office because you pick them up and you'll maybe see a living room, uh, a master bedroom, just things that you think, wow, this is a great idea. So I started getting more and more skilled at doing it. and. Originally, when I started out with real estate, which was like 25 years ago, I was working with someone. He did not have that skill, and he was very well known in the area where we sell, which is Yorba Linda, California, over in the Orange County area. And so with the skills that I had, and he was really known as a very established real estate agent, we started putting them together and I found, wow, this really works. So, you know, a lot of the things that you find that seem so easy are things that sellers just don't naturally think about. And when you go to list their home, you come in there and maybe you suggest some of these ideas to them and you can see their eyes just kind of brighten and their ears perk up because you're you're realizing that you're telling them how much different their house can look by painting it, recarpeting it, taking out a lot of the clutter. People have a lot, a lot of clutter in a property that they think it's just all part of selling their house, but depersonalizing it, taking out furniture. Sometimes we actually have to have them take out all the furniture because maybe it's just old and dated or it's worn. And there's so many more things that you can see about how that room could look. So I start from the moment I usually drive up to a property, looking at the outside of a property. That's initially your very first impression. So if you look at it and the flowers look dead, the trees are overgrown, if the grass is all brown, um, if you see planters that could look so much prettier, they were just enhanced a little bit. Uh, a lot of people don't think about painting a front door. Uh, those are all changes that just 
if you have any kind of creativity or if you have any kind of, uh, of a way of putting things together, that's initially where you start. Then you'll walk in a home and your first impression is kind of with what you're seeing is how many more changes maybe you need to make to that particular property as you're walking through it with a seller. It helps you so much establish a rapport with the seller because as you're walking through it, you might suggest a few of these changes and also letting them know at that time that it's usually a 15 to 20 percent more in value because of staging a property. Um, I right. will see so many changes that, that honestly uh, can make a huge amount of difference. Well, right there. I mean, you know, first of all, you've been a top sales executive year in and year out for your business. And I know through our conversations how much you believe the staging has been such a big part of it. When you say 15 to 20 percent of value, um, that is such a powerful differentiator uh, because it totally affects the consumer. T talk, can you talk a little bit more about that? And, and what do you do to really tie that in to that direct value? Well, when you're talking to a seller and you're basically showing them pictures of properties that were on the MLS, and let's just say some of them just don't show well, and then you show them some of the properties that you've just staged and you've shown them the before and the after, and you're showing them maybe the difference of the value to what you brought to that seller versus what maybe the house down the street got because it wasn't able to do either the gift that I have or, or that maybe uh, someone just wasn't willing, another agent wasn't willing to spend a, maybe a few dollars. I tell most agents that ask me about any kind of staging, it takes about a minimum of $2,000 if you're going to just go in there and change anything around in a home. Sometimes it's paint, sometimes it's carpet. Usually I will bring out a, uh, uh, when I start to talk about staging, I'll bring out a paint wheel that shows different colors. I always stay in more of a neutral color uh, that we've worked with over a number of years. And depending on what's really popular at the time, like when you go through a model home, what you're seeing that are more of the current colors. Like right now, it's all the grages. We call it the grage and the beiges. And we, and we work from that to establish our neutral palette. And then we add accent colors so that they'll photograph beautifully. We show sellers all of that. We show them how that is what's bringing in that 15 to 20% value by just showing them current comps. And we've done this so many times where maybe we're besides what the market is just doing right now, where we're still on top of that because of how it shows. And we, we sent over some samples today of what are before and afters that you can kind of see that have made such a difference and change. Some of it was paint, some of it was furniture, some of it was uh, adding just different accessories to a home. What I say to an agent when you talk about the $2,000, Go out and get yourself that paint wheel. Get yourself some carpet samples that show um, what colors work well for a neutral palette. Uh, get some, some throw rugs, area rugs, because you can change color with just putting an area rug in front of a sofa or a couple of chairs. Bring in plants. Get some flowers. Use more area flowers. The orchids right now have been very popular. Um, but use something that's going to really photograph well. What I do and what Alice and I have found so well to work is that we go in and we'll take before pictures and we'll take after pictures on our phone. When we look through those pictures, we get some idea how that's going to photograph on the MLS, which is critical. And that first impression is to how you're going to attract that buyer. The seller's all about how he's going to get enough buyers anymore right now and currently. It's multi. We're doing where we're, we're getting uh, multiple offers. So they want to see the prices going higher. So you've got to make it the very, very, uh, th that it presents itself the very, very best you can. The other thing that we've been doing lately that has really helped when homes are vacant and maybe for an agent that isn't as experienced and that's to use virtual staging because 
On homes that are vacant, they have a little bit more of that cold feel and they don't have any kind of an emotional feel to them where you walk into a home and feel a presence. So doing the virtual staging looks like it's actually really um, like if someone has staged the property, it's gotten to be so good and people are so good doing it that the photographer can go in and add virtual staging to a home and you think the house has actually been staged. We did that to a home that we're going to show you in a little bit that will really, I think for most agents, think that that house was actually staged. Um, yeah, I, I think this is really a, a great time, uh, especially with what you just shared there. Can we look at those before and afters and can you take us through uh, that? Okay, that'd be great. Okay, this house was actually a creamy color and we went in and made it, a, it had more of the golds in it. And we went in and brought it back up. It's actually a home that was built in the 80s, the early 80s. And so you're competing with homes right now, especially new homes that have all the different architectural looks of everything that's more current. So to make this look newer and be able to compete with those homes, the carpet was all staged, I uh, changed out, sorry, it was all changed out. The furniture was actually changed because this was a large sectional that was very, very traditional. And even though it was a traditional home, it needed to be what we called contemporized. It needed to be come up to the current times of what furniture is looking like. So when a buyer comes in, it's making you feel like it's uh, the current decor. And you're not walking into an older home and feeling like this is the 80s or the 90s. So the pieces on the left is showing a very traditional table, a very oversized sectional, um, a, a mirror that was more of the traditional look, the pictures that were a little bit darker. You can see a black shade in that picture. We went in and we actually, for sofas that cost about $800, this whole room ran about maybe... Uh, 16, 15, 1600 dollars. But the difference of how it transformed from the look of being darker, uh, more traditional into a light, airy, and very uh, inviting room. And if you'll notice when I say to accent with a color, we use the blue. If you keep these items, you're gonna be able to reuse them in another home people will probably never realize they've been used in another property because the home itself is not the same current look of what this house was in the 80s. So you can use them in another, in another home. And so I use the blues and the blues with the creams, the light carpet and the light walls just made this look so much nicer and so much lighter, brighter and inviting when you walk sure. into it. Yeah, love it. Now, though, this one was a complete, like, total change. So this one was the early 90s look, and you had the valances, which were really popular, and the plaids that were very traditional with the ottoman that, that just filled the room. So you can see on the left, these were wine-colored sofas with a contrasting welting and, and uh, fringe. And you can see the cabinets, which no one likes now, were... Uh, an oak stain that left it really dated looking. So on the right, you, those are the same windows, but the carpet was changed out. The walls were changed from the gold to cream. Um, the sofas were changed. And there isn't a picture showing this entertainment, but that entertain, enter, entertainment was actually made to more of an espresso. So there was a contrast in the espresso coloring to the light cream wall. And that table is the same table stained darker and turned so that it actually was diagonal in the room and accented again with the blues. I like the blues, especially against the cream because it's very contrasting and it photographs really well. Wow. So that, now this one, this is really night and day. So here's your dark wood flooring. It's very, very popular. People love hardwood flooring. The carpet on the left was a shag carpet. Um, and these chairs, which are Carson chairs that are still very, very popular, 
but they had too much of the gold, uh, too much of that traditional look. So we went to more of a contemporary chair. We got rid of the floral arrangement that had all the gold tones. We changed the paint of the cabinets, which is just absolutely drastic. So the whites brought it more current. The granite's the same color, but it was toned down by it not being all the same color. The window seat that's showing in the left and not on the right it was all made white. The pillows were taken off and made that room less heavy, much more inviting, much more current, and uh, it did very well in resale. Let me ask you this. I mean, because these are, I mean, it's, it's amazing. When you go, like even this one where you're painting cabinets, how do you deal effectively, and I know you do, with you know, the sellers, how do you get this through? Um, certainly, I know your expertise helps and the way that you're explaining it without a doubt, but what other things do you do to get them to take that leap for you? Well, anything that is a dated color just doesn't work as well in today's market. So that was a glazed cabinetry and those were gold cabinets were glazed in like a coffee brown which looked beautiful at the time. Oh, he's gone to the next picture. Uh, but it looked beautiful at the time, but it got to be just very passe for the current colors that were now. So right now, what's popular in your cabinet colors or your whites, they use grays, an espresso brown, but they're always used somewhat with a lighter contrasting color. If you're gonna use a dark espresso cabinet, usually you'll use a light white or maybe a, uh, maybe quartz is very popular right now with the vein running through it all in a lighter color so it's just opposite prettier much prettier this one coming up was a home that alice and i took not too long ago and actually i i wish there were more before and after pictures of this house because i have to tell you initially when we walked through it it was where you really thought this house needs to be staged almost throughout it but when I say that, a person thinks, oh, that has to cost a fortune. Actually, it can be very cost effective if you know what you need to stage and do it in a way that it changes the room around. So here was bringing in there again some of the blues um, that I probably had used in some of the other properties and her drapes that were just straight and they had no character. So her living room we reused, repurposed is the word, and um, we took out an, a table that did nothing in the corner. We took out two flowered uh, pattern chairs that you can see right here that were kind of a green that actually almost had a pinkish coral in them. And they did nothing for her house. So we took a sofa, uh, that looked nice in the room, added some blues to it, added the lamps, added some pictures back over the top of the fireplace, tied the, tied the drapes back, and it became lighter, airier, and much more model home-like. That chair actually came out of a family room because she had too many chairs in her family room, so we repurposed it and put it into there, and it actually it looked beautiful in the picture. Wow. Okay, now this is an actually, this is really how you can utilize what a seller has. So here's those two chairs on the left-hand corner that were just making that room too heavy and actually taking away from that family room. It looked smaller. So we took one of them out, we repositioned it to the middle, we used her coffee table. If you get books, if you get candles, uh, plants in this $2,000 that I was saying of an agent initially spends, pillows, throws, lamps for so many sellers. It's amazing how they're out of scale to the size of a home. So you'll have a small lamp in a big room and it looks funny. And I took their table. I actually had like a little um, uh, small over to the right hand side. You can barely see it in the left. But they had a small little uh, piece of furniture over there on the right that it did. It just was sitting there. It did nothing. So we put like uh, we took and put some just airy uh, flowers in the pot, 
and we put it in a vase over there on the right hand side and then this little picture of her dog was one that had just passed on and I knew that was special to her so I left that there. I added a lamp so at nighttime the room would have a little bit more character. Um, her television was fine there but we added a few more things to just balance it out more. And you can see that kind of stringy looking chaffalera tree on the left hand side and we repurposed it with a fuller uh, tree in that same spot. And we put the blue pillows and took off her pillows that absolutely had no color. And that room actually was really, really pretty and added a picture that kind of pulled the blues back in that you can see on the right hand side there that kind of tied the room all together. And um, we had many people compliment how well they liked that room. Yeah, you know, it's amazing that you can do all this so as affordably as you were talking about. And you don't seem, you don't seem to be getting pushback um, from clients. They seem to be supporting it once you explain to them some of the differences uh, that you're recommending. Well, I think that anybody sees changes, they welcome anything that just looks much nicer. And when you take and you and you change a room around, I, I can tell you just on that property, those people came home and just went, wow, I mean, this is the only issue sometimes you have is people fall back in love with their homes again and they don't realize we just <laughs> fell. And then you're kind of going, nope, maybe I went too far on that one. Because you're thinking, oh, you do still want to sell your house, right? <laughs> That's classic. I love it. I love it. Well, that means staging is absolutely sending the right feeling. You mentioned earlier virtual staging. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, you know, what does that cost? How, how does that work? Uh, virtual staging is just a tool that I think people used to use, the agents used to use it. And then the problem with it is it looked too artificial. You'd look at a property and you'd think, gosh, someone just plopped those pictures in there. And so I was a little hesitant, and then this photographer just kept saying, you know, Edie, you need to try this. Well, when I saw it, I was just, I was shocked that it looked like someone had actually staged their home. And why that helps, it's about, it's, I'm sure uh, different the different photographers are different pricing uh, as far as cost-wise goes, but the one we had did it for $35 a room. And you cannot buy too many items in staging that you're not going to spend more than $35 right off the start of uh, just picking up a few things. And like a home goods, I probably shouldn't be giving people plugs here. But there's, <laughs> there's just great stores out there now where you can buy things so much more reasonable. When you put it all together, no one's realizing really where you got it. And virtual staging just instantly does that room. I think Maria Hill may have a couple pictures of that. So I'm going to have her uh, bring those up for us. So uh, let's see if we can get her. And while she's bringing those, yeah. those while she's grabbing those, um, do you recommend that the seller's there while you do the staging or, or no? No, because the problem is emotionally you've asked him to declutter. I mean, those are some of the things that are just the 101 of staging a property. The very first things you want to start with is see how open they are about staging. Most of the time, once you've shown them the pictures and they can see the before and the afters, then they they open much more back up to the cost that maybe they're gonna you know see skyrocket if they do some of this. So uh, for me, what I found is that um, you know I just start from the very moment I go in talking to a seller and letting them know I think those pictures are ready and she got bringing them up uh, so uh, stage, people are open to things and changes as long as they think there's something that uh, you know they profit from it and the biggest thing for sellers is they don't want to go through that if they don't have to so I don't want to be there when we're doing this because we're bringing in so many so many things that at the time when you first bring them in, it looks like a tornado hit their house because you're bringing in all these different items. And it's better if they're not there. 
it's emotional, you're changing it. You want them to walk in when it's totally finished and go, wow, I can't believe this is my house. Yeah. And no, that's, cool. that's when it's so satisfying. Do you end up doing um, the outside as well? Do you do stuff where you're staging outside? Yes, yes. And the important thing is it's kind of like it's kind of like a woman that goes out and buys a dress, but then she forgets the shoes and the purse. You've got to include the whole packing. <laughs> so you want to make sure that from the time you drive up, it's your first impression. It's an agent's first impression. It's a buyer's first impression. So you want to, you want to do the complete package. So if the trees are dead, if, uh, if they need to be trimmed because you can't see any of the windows, if the, uh, Planners don't look fresh and inviting, so maybe you add bark. Bark is so inexpensive that it's a finishing tool that makes so much difference in a yard. The front door can't look tired and old. Sometimes you need to put a fresh coat of paint on it. Anything that's an improvement from the time you, you go up to that property, a lot of times I'll take shutters, which a person already has, and just simply painting them and putting a contrast of what that original color is of that home like maybe black shutters and a black door on a white house or uh, any color that kind of pops it a little more and then adding flowers in uh, a planner that maybe pick up that same color there's a home that we staged that actually we brought in the pots that were the same color as front door and we put them on top of pillars then we had them add flowers and it just gave it that complete package when you walked up and said wow this is pretty a yard that has all the brown spots having either uh, resawed it or have it a couple weeks before you're going to take pictures where you have a gardener just go in and reseed some of that it's those finishing touches that help from the minute you drive up a backyard if they have a pool you want to make sure that the all the cushions are fresh and look Maybe there, a pop of color where you add pillows to some of the cushions that are going to make it photograph prettier, that all the water features are working so that you have those that kind of utilize how much prettier their yard can look. Uh, some people have a tendency to want to put out all these umbrellas. The problem is they don't photograph as well. So you want to make sure that you've taken pictures just like it's going to look on the MLS, and your eye will tell you whether that photograph's good or not. Um, and everything from that start, we always give people um, a list here, and I'll share a couple of them with you. It's a checklist. And on this checklist, it'll kind of show you all the different items that you may want to go through on a home. And some of those are including some staging items. And then we make sure and we tell uh, when we go in, we want a vendor's list that basically shows, um, you know, the different sources and maybe what a seller is going to need. So he's not stuck thinking, well, gee, I don't have a painter or I don't have, uh, I don't have a great gardener or I don't have a handyman that can help me get some of these things done. And it's all part of what's included in staging. And I tell people, you know, make sure when you're having your windows clean, make sure your mirrors are clean because maybe you've got a great big gorgeous mirror in your foyer when you walk in, but it's it's just not, uh, doesn't photograph well. Uh, I'm sorry, you have those pictures for virtual staging now? Here we go. All right. Oh, okay, I guess we've got them done differently, Alice. You want to come in behind me maybe? And we're going to show you just a few pictures of virtual staging because it really is effective here. You guys got them? Um, so we're trying to get the before and the after. Okay. I don't know how well this is going to work. Mark, can you see this? Yeah, There's right. Perfect. Yeah, right in the middle. That's right in the middle right now. You want to flip it over, Allison, for me so I can hold it? Okay, there's a living room. Okay. And then this is virtual staging afterwards. You want to go this way or? Yeah. Where am I going? Sorry. We're this wasn't something we, but I want you to see the after picture just so you can tell. Oh, just passed it. No? There it is. Okay. Here's the after picture of that same room. And wow. so you can see that that virtual staging looks like someone went in and staged that property. And maybe she can show you the before one more time. 
there's the before. There's the before. See how much different that room looks? Sure. Okay, and here's another one. Well, that's the before. Okay, this before in the nook area. I can't find the after. Okay. We're not, I don't know how far this we're is the same, that same room with staged, virtual staging. Yeah, virtual staging. It's just so, it's just so uh, cost effective. And to even get people calling or agents to call, it just looks so much more complete and it looks so much warmer and inviting that, and that's a relatively very inexpensive cost. Sure. Do you, does, does it mention virtual staging on anything when you use it or? Um... Well, people can put virtual staging in there. I think the whole idea is that just how it presents itself on the MLS. And so what you're trying to do is make them believe, wow, this, this room looks gorgeous, you know? So I don't go into a lot of virtual staging. I just want the room and the house to show better. And um, I mean, homes are selling relatively quick anyway, but when you have a home, let's just say an agent gets a property that's been on the market for a long, long time. And you're thinking in this kind of market, why hasn't that gone? I can tell you a number of times when you just basically go in and you have them painted out, sometimes we carpet it, and then stage that home. And it's amazing how quick it'll sell. Same thing on a virtual staging. It works the same way because it's all that first impression. So when they're looking at that MLS and they're seeing the, the wow pictures versus what looked tired, older, maybe darker because no one bothered to take the dark drapes out of it. I can't believe how many homes don't take down shears that are tired and worn looking. Uh, some of the mistakes are you can take a fireplace that maybe is way too outdated and you can paint it out white or you can just take them and wash them. You take paint and you just take sponges and you literally wash the color back into a fireplace and it can make a room look totally different because maybe it's the focal point of that room, but it looked terrible. So you're just enhancing what you have to work with. When people think, oh, I hate to spend maybe four or $5,000 to redo my kitchen as far as repainting or re-sanding it down and restaining it, they're going to make so much more money back because it's proven that wives are looking at kitchens, family rooms, bathrooms, and backyards most of the time. Well, um, you know, <clears throat> I, I have to say, I mean, in the environment we're in now, for, for you to have a property where people are excited to pay more I mean, it's just the environment we're in right now. I can only believe that's a help. Um, and, you know, it's funny. I, and I am one of these people that, you know, I don't have that eye and that vision that you have. Um, that's why I think the before and after pictures are really wows to me. Because what it lets you know, even if it's virtual, it lets you know, this is what this room can look like. Yes. This is yeah. what's possible. Even though yes. you can't see it on your own, this this can be done, and, and I love that. Well, I, I think staging for so many years just has enhanced my real estate career, and, and honestly, I, I've always loved it. I In my own home, it just makes me feel better. If I walk into a house that feels like me and is something that is wowed, I wake up in the morning and it's just part of me. And, and then I'm constantly switching and changing things around, but I feel like that is a huge plus. Uh, and even people that have it for a short amount of time before they move, you know, there's been many times where people say, gee, I wish you'd come to my next home and help me with it. And it's all about that they felt good before they sold their home. And you're allowing them to still share all those memories they had in that property but they leave it feeling really rewarded and very proud. It's the pride of ownership that you've helped them give. I, I hear you. So, so, all right, so let me ask you this. What advice would you have for either a new sales executive or a seasoned sales executive that really hasn't jumped into this staging realm as of yet, but wants to add it 
as a service offering, because I'll tell you, just listening to you, it's such a point of difference uh, comparative. So what advice would you have for that agent who does not have that expertise or is just starting? Well, they need to go out and they anything is all about researching it. So you want to go out to model homes and look through them, take pictures. You know, the more you can arm yourself and become familiar with things that you thought, wow, that looks really good. Go through the MLS. There's many homes that are staged on the MLS. Look and see what they've done. Be able to talk that talk so that when you go out to a home, you have something to present different to them than that last agent that was just there. Um, you know, there's magazines anymore that you can go through. You can buy home decorating magazines at the markets. I get into like even a Z gallery or any of these that are just, you know, you get free. And, and the more that you can do that and go out and buy some of the items that I've mentioned, because when you put them together, you might be able to use their sofas, you might be able to use their chairs. What is probably one of the biggest things, and now with the COVID, it's been a little more difficult, so they have to be new. But comforters are very inexpensive. They can change a bedroom with pillows, throws, plants. Uh, I, I mentioned before, if you take a small lamp that maybe looks just out of scale and out, it just looks funny in a room, and maybe you bring in lamps that are just uh, flattering to that room or go change that decor. Those are not expensive items. Paint the room. Maybe it's a dark color. I, I have a lady that I was saying, when Mark and I talked not too long ago, that she loved these bright colors. So she wanted to put them in her rooms of her house. And I said, well, we can't have El Torito living here. You know, we need to make it really where it's just, where it's inviting. So you want to bring, you want to bring a neutral palette and if you need to add, add an accent color, maybe use it from a picture that she has on her wall, but use something that's in uh, a taste that most buyers would find like with their acceptance of that. Yeah. They have uh, where they feel like it's very complimentary. We just had her do a very neutral uh, room out and we used a navy because she had a lot of moldings that were white. So we had, um, we had crown molding and we had a chair rail and we added a navy to the top of that. And then we used a neutral paint and we brought in secondary accessories that just uh, made it look modern-like. And she absolutely loves it. But if she had left those colors in her house to try and sell her home, they were outdated and they were way too bright. Fair enough. You know, I got to believe um, that going to out and having people just preview, agents previewing new homes, uh, uh, would, that, would you advise that to kind of get all yeah. kinds of other tips? It's as many things that you can help make yourself feel more comfortable with that give your mind ideas and take pictures because then you have something to go back on and just say, well, that, I really love the way this room looked. It doesn't mean it's kind of like they take designer dresses and then they bring in copies of them. You can go and make something look beautiful without spending thousands of dollars, but yeah. picture wise, and that's what they always tell you, a picture says a thousand words, it will because it will it will make that home look so much more inviting than maybe that same price point that they've just pulled up of a couple other homes right beside it. Fair enough. Edie, thank you so very much. Uh, this was a wealth of information. Uh, we totally appreciate your time. I hope yeah. all our viewers um, got a lot of intel. Um, and, uh, if there, is there any questions that came in? Nope, nothing right now. All right, Edie, thanks again. Thank appreciate you. it. If yeah. you, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I said, I absolutely loved it. Thank you for well, having me. Well, you were amazing. Thank you. Thank you for your time. If you liked it, please like, follow and share. We will see you every week. Tuesday at 1.30 Pacific Standard Time. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it.